So I'm just want to tell you how much I love your choreography, but especially this work on Othello that you've done. And it's the only work on Shakespeare that you have actually yes. created. Yes. So what drew you to this play rather than Midsummer Night's Dream or mm. some well, other play? The, the other famously choreographed Shakespeare plays, for instance, Romeo and Juliet, the most yeah. well-known, also is a play like Othello that I believe can be told in pictures and in images uh, because the... Um, the knowledge of the play is so widespread, the audience comes with a great deal of understanding. So the potential for not needing to use the words is already there if you yeah. can portray the images yeah. and, and embody the emotional conditions that, that the play creates. Yeah. And one of the ways you do this is really by um, avoiding pantomime. Yes. So we really have, you ma somehow managed to tell the story without us feeling like the characters are acting out something that would be better in language. And that's what often makes ballet, uh, story ballets unsatisfactory. How, yes. how did you do that? What well, were your goals Well, I did that there? by intent. That was a choice. I wanted to avoid pantomime because many of the story ballets that use pantomime ostensibly look like they're behaving like silent movies. And, and I thought that dance has more possibility than behaving like a silent movie. So I wanted to find um, physical movement and shape that could depict the story and the, the characters and the relationship without uh, resorting to pantomime. So I set that challenge for myself and, yeah. uh, and for the most part stuck to it. There may be a few pantomime moments in the dance only when I finally had to resort to it, but uh, seldom. And then you just you make some very, very striking choices. For example, having the handkerchief wander through the entire drama concluding with the murdering Desdemona with the handkerchief. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you came to that as a, a solution well, because, to the end um, of the play. I thought that the handkerchief is Othello's uh, greatest expression of love to her. And then as the most, the most deeply held expression of love symbolically ought to be the object that is her destruction because he in his own mind is killing her out of love uh, she's deeply Christian. Um, she begs to be finally taken to heaven and released from this hell that she's accidentally caught up in and, and out of love with this object of love, a suffering love, a, a very dark, it, it's something like the, the uh, Parsifal love and death um, idea. Right, right. Um, can you say a little bit about how you work with... Sorry, the not Parsifal. Um, just on his own. Yes, yes. Um, can you say a little bit about how you work with uh, dancers and their capacities when you're designing a particular role? I know that some of these roles were designed with the dancers that we see in the in the production. Yes. Well, first, I'm looking for dancers who, to begin with, bring uh, something of the character with them, or what I think would be an understanding of the character in the way that they move, not so much in the way that they look, but in the way that they move. Paris Maynard, for example, who created the role of Iago, a wonderful dancer and extremely precise, almost stiletto-like stiletto precision in his dancing at all times. Yeah. And so that was very evocative of the precision that Iago has in the way that he evolves his plot very precisely, very um, uh, thoughtfully in a way, very methodically. Yeah. And uh, I make something of Iago's vanity Yes, uh, in yes. the belly, also where he yes. smooths his hair in, in times yes. of the most of the greatest stress. Yes, yes. And you just do amazing things with Iago and Othello dancing together, and it seems like you're really stretching what ballet traditionally does and taking it into some really extraordinary places. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, well, at a certain point, I have already spoken about it in movement. And, and there's, there's an occasional idea that's hard to put into words because I feel like I've done it in movement as well as I, I can. Yeah. I can't exactly answer that question. Yeah. I go to the studio, I'm searching for that possibility, yeah. a way to tell their stories and to define their characters and the effect they have on each other. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, it's a search and destroy mission. Yeah. You keep making things, throwing them out, making them, throwing them out, and then finally you key into to what you've been searching for. Well, we're so glad that you found it. Thank you so much. Thank you.